Hi everybody, this is a very short video explaining cluster and block randomization. I'm Nahomi Ichino, the current EGAP trainings director and one of the authors of The Theory and Practice of Field Experiments, an introduction from the EGAP Learning Days, which is an online resource for learning about randomized field experiments, or RCTs. Okay, so first let's start out with a sample. Each circle represents an individual here. And before we get to block or cluster randomization, let's assign one half of these individuals to treatment and one half to control. So here the treated units are represented by triangles, and we did complete randomization. Now with block and cluster randomization, individuals belong to groups, and we use those groups differently with these two types of randomization. So in this representation, there are four groups, each represented by a different color. And in this example, all the groups are the same size, but you don't have to have them be the same size. With block randomization, we randomize within each group, and the group is called a block. So you can see that we assigned one half of the individuals in each group, or each block, to treatment. So within each group, half of them, these are triangles and half of these are circles. You can see that we have triangles and circles within each group. With block randomization, we randomize within each group, and the group is now called a block. You can see that we assigned one half of the individuals in each group or block to treatment. We have triangles and circles in each group. The benefit of block randomization is that we get balance across treatment and control groups in the number of individuals from each block. You can think about this as having equal numbers of A, B, C, and D group members that are triangles and that are circles. And as we mentioned before, the blocks don't have to be the same size. With cluster randomization, we do the randomization at the group level, and that group is now called a cluster. So all the individuals in the group are assigned to the same treatment condition. You can see that in, that in each group, all the units are either triangles or they're all circles. The clusters don't have to be the same size, but you want to be careful when you have clusters that vary greatly in size. We lose statistical power by doing cluster randomization. So, it's not great, but sometimes it's unavoidable. For example, the treatment might be at the school level, and we're measuring outcomes at the, individual, at the level of individual students, and the treatment can only be assigned at the school level. We can also combine the two by doing cluster randomization with each block. So in this figure, each column is a cluster, and we have four clusters within each block. And so you can see that within each column, all the units are either all circles or all triangles. But within the block, so these are colors, um, you have both circles and triangles. So an example would be if we could assign treatment at the classroom level, but not at the level of the individual student. We get the benefit of balance on the blocks, that is, we get tr treatment and control groups that are balanced in the number of individuals they contain from each group. So to summarize, the key points are, one, block randomization is when we randomize individual units within each group, where the groups are known as blocks, so that treatment and control groups will be balanced in the number of individuals from each block. Okay, cluster randomization is slightly different. All units within the same group, and now the group is called a cluster, are assigned to the same treatment condition. And you can combine these by doing cluster randomization within blocks, but you can't do it the other way around. So an example is where the school is a block, and then you assign treatment at the classroom level. So all students in the same classroom have the same treatment assignment status. And then finally, remember that you're still measuring outcomes at the individual level, so they're both individuals and groups. Finally, please go to our book and the EGAP Methods Guides for more detail. Thanks for watching.